What's going on YouTube? So I wanted to make another quick video. Well, I don't know how quick it's going to be, uh, but I want to talk about a couple things. Uh, so before I got into RV transport, I did like most of you or all of you were doing and got on YouTube and was looking up answers. I had questions and I, I wanted answers and where do we all go? We go to the internet and uh, YouTube. And so one of the things that I never really did find an answer to, uh, well, there was a bunch of things really, but um, one of the things that I never really, not really that I didn't get an answer to it, but that uh, wasn't ever addressed was like, what do you do when you are driving and say, like me today, I delivered that <laughs> the brick on wheels with a parachute behind it. Um, I delivered that one today in, in Idaho. In uh, now I can't think of the name of the town, but it's uh, it was on Highway 55, Idaho 55, and that highway takes you right up into the mountains, up and down. There's a couple seven percent grades. Uh, both up and down both ways. So, I mean, I went up a 7% grade going there with the trailer, down that same 7% grade um, with the trailer to deliver. And then on the way back, um, again, you know, this time without the trailer. So naturally without a load, you know, going up and down those grades is not that bad. But the thing that I wanted to talk about was, or is, um, how to handle those grades, how to handle steep, uh, steep grades like that. And so I, I'm just going to use my personally, my, or my personal experience, what I do in my current setup on my truck. So, uh, I've got gobs of power. I've got power for days. I've got good brakes, but I do not have an exhaust brake. Um, those of you that have an exhaust brake, use it. So, you know, when you are going downhill, um, flip that ex exhaust brake on and let it do a lot of that work for you. The last thing that you want to do is ride your brakes. Um, there's, and a lot of you may know this, a lot of people getting into RV transport may have years of experience pulling a trailer. A lot of people getting into RV transport may not have any experience pulling a trailer. Um, you know, or very limited. And that experience may not include going up and down very steep uh, inclines. So um, if you have an exhaust brake on your truck, use it. Uh, that's what it's there for. It's there to use the engine's braking ability and the exhaust back pressure to use that engine to slow the vehicle um, so that you can minimize the use of your brakes. Um, I do have a lot of people don't I have I have my CDL license and one of the things that they teach you when or that you learn not really necessarily that they teach you I didn't go to a school to get it uh, I grew up around trucks so uh, you know I just knew um, but um, one of the things that you learn when you are getting your commercial driver's license or going through those classes is uh, that if you have to, if you're in a situation where you have to use your brakes a lot, um, you don't ride your brake. You don't put your foot on, and you see a lot of people doing this like just around town. You know, they ride, they put their foot on the brake pedal and they just ride that brake. Um, you don't do that. You don't want to do that because of a thing called brake fade. So what happens is that as your brake rotors uh, and or drums and the pads or shoes, they get hot, they lose the ability to have that braking force. No matter how hard you push on that brake pedal, they are not going to have the same ability that they would normally have to slow the vehicle because of excessive heat. Um, just as in anything, your engine, your tires, your anything, heat is your killer. Heat will kill everything. And that same is true for your brakes. Um, so 
those of you with exhaust brakes, like I said, use them. Now, I'm not going to say that, hey, I got this exhaust brake, flip it on, engine's doing its thing, that it, you were never going to have to touch your brakes, because that's probably not going to be the case. You, you are probably going to have to touch your brakes, you know, a few times. Um, but it's there to keep you from having used them as much. Now, in cases like mine, and a lot of people that don't have exhaust brakes or engine brakes, there's two different things. You have exhaust brakes, uh, and exhaust brakes go on, like the name implies, on your exhaust. Um, and then your engine brake. An engine brake is different in the sense that it actually controls the valves and how the valves open and your camshaft and everything else. Um, they make an engine brake for mine. You pull the valve cover off. You take there. There's actually like a spacer that goes on top of the head that the valve cover sits on. You take that off. It goes on there. It's got a bunch of electronics. It's expensive as all hell, but they work really, really well. Um, that's kind of getting aside from getting away from where I want to go with this video because those of you that don't have exhaust brakes uh, or engine brakes, um, you have no choice but to use your brakes. Um, in the case of the trailer that I was pulling today, um, that thing, <laughs> it was a parachute behind me. So I had that to my advantage. I could let off the throttle and going downhill, any, any downhill, I could literally feel because of the way that it was designed, it was, it was just flat faced. So much, it created so much wind resistance. I could feel it slowing my truck down. So, you know, use that to your advantage if you have that. Now, I'm not saying every trailer out there is, is not going to be able to provide that benefit for you. Uh, the downside was the absolutely horrendous fuel mileage I got. I shit you not, my truck right now empty coming up those same grades coming back from dropping Cascade, Idaho. Idaho that's where it is. Cascade, Idaho. Uh, coming back that same road, 25.1 miles per gallon at 65 miles an hour. You know, it ranged between 45 and 65 miles an hour. I mean, you got to slow down a lot of curves and stuff. Going there, six and a half. <laughs> so, yeah, that thing was a killer. But the benefit was the fact that it was literally a parachute behind me. And so when I needed to slow down, I could count on that trailer to drag my ass down. Um, so, but that aside, um, when you have to use your brakes, my method is and it works well for me um it and a lot of truck drivers they'll actually tell you this in your if you just go pick up go to your local dmv and pick up a commercial driving book you may have no intentions of ever getting your cdl license and that's fine but there's a lot of good information in it and one of the things that they'll tell you is is i can't remember the exact wordage or verbiage or however you want to put it that they use but uh pump your brakes so tap them so apply your brakes let off apply your brakes let off apply your brakes let off and and do it like that so what i do is say i'm going down this this seven percent grade now seven percent is pretty steep i mean that's your truck can run away from you very fast on a seven percent grade um what i do is I watch my speed, say the speed posted speed limit is 60 miles an hour. I watch my speed. I tip, I typically go five miles an hour under that anyway, uh, just because I am not trying to race anybody and I could give a shit less if the person behind me is getting impatient, they can wait. Um, cause I'm trying not to die or kill anybody else. So what I'll do is I'll watch my speed. I'll maintain you know, about five miles an hour under the speed limit. I'm looking at my speedometer and I'm reaching for my brake pedal as I'm talking about this. Um, and as I'm approaching a curve, I will firmly apply the brakes and I will say the sign that you're coming up to this curve, you know, posted speed limit is 60 miles an hour. I'm maintaining a 55 to 60 between that range speed and the sign coming up to the, on the curve says, hey, this, this curve is a 45 mile an hour curve. Before I get to that curve, and I don't mean like way back there, I mean as I'm approaching to have to start turning, I firmly apply my brakes 
drop my speed to about 40, between 40 and 45, whatever the recommended speed is. I tend to go a little bit less because I don't like the lean. Uh, I like a nice, comfortable, smooth ride. So I don't want to feel like my truck or the trailer is leaning more than it, I, I want it to. Um, and then, so firmly apply the brakes, slow down. I'm not going to say rapidly, but you're going to, you're going to slow down and then let off the brakes completely and then go around that corner. Be ready. I mean, you're not on the throttle now. I mean, you're not trying to gas back up to or back up to 55, 60 mile an hour. Just firmly apply the brakes, drop the speed down to 40, 45, whatever the, the recommended speed is for that, for that curve. And then let off and just kind of coast through that. Now you're still going to be going downhill. So you may gain speed again as, ne as needed and as necessary, just apply your brakes. Do not ride your brakes because as soon as you get that brake fade and they get too hot, you're done and you won't be able to stop at all. And that's when accidents happen. So I wanted to talk about that. Um, that's what I do. And it works well for me. I have, I've driven, now I only have a class B, so this is off the record. I've driven Peterbilt's with 53 foot trailers behind them. I mean, big trucks with 53 foot trailers, flatbeds and reef, or not reefers, but dry vans behind them, delivering two customers and stuff. I've done that, I can't tell you how many times throughout my career working in the commercial industry. Uh, in my own vehicles, I've always had one ton pickups or, or sometimes larger or have driven one ton pickups or larger for my job and have most of the time always had a trailer behind me, um, for, you know, delivering whatever it was or whatever the case was. And I have yet in, let me see, I started doing, I started working in the commercial industry in about 2003. Uh, ish and it's 2021 now and there was a couple breaks in between you know like a year two years whatever um but let's just say since let's just say since 2005 to now 2006 to now i have never experienced brake fade so just keep that in mind when you're when you're doing that when you're going up and down steep grades um course going up you're not going to be using your brakes anyway unless some dumbass in front of you decides they're going to slam on theirs but uh or something happens but uh that's what that's what i do so if you don't have an exhaust brake and even if you do have an exhaust brake that is a good method to use to slow down is just to do not under any circumstances ride your brake even even just lightly applying the brake and keeping it there for an extended period of time will generate that excessive heat and then we'll destroy your brakes and they, they'll become useless. So like I said, you're going down, you see the posted sign, the posted speed for the recommended speed for the curve, firmly apply the brakes, slow down rapidly. And I don't mean like, bam, slam on the brakes, brink, screech into a halt. Just use your judgment, firmly apply, rapidly slow down to let a little less than the posted a recommended curve speed so if it says 45 drop her down to 40 let off the brakes completely coast through that corner or th through that curve and then if you got to do it again you got to do it again but the whole idea is apply the brakes let off apply the brakes let off because then they're going to get hot when you apply them and then when you let off they're going to cool down and talk to a trucker talk to an 18 wheeler they're going to tell you that's what they do if you're behind an 18 wheeler Watch their brake lights, because that's what they're doing. They're gonna pump their brakes. They're gonna hit the brakes, they're gonna let off. They're gonna hit the brakes, they're gonna let off. So that's what I recommend. That's what works for me. Um, so yeah, just uh, use your judgment. I mean, really this, this whole game here, this whole thing that we do, it's all just using your best judgment, trying to stay safe and yeah, and, and that's it, so. You guys stay safe out there. Uh, I'm going to be coming at you again probably tomorrow uh, with another video because I got something else I want to talk about. Um, so, yeah, you guys stay safe out there, and hopefully this helps. If it did help you, hit that like button, subscribe, comment, 
you know, shoot me a message, you know, if you got other suggestions, drop a comment down below, you know, I mean, other people have other experiences, they've got other knowledge, so yeah, hit that thumbs up, if you don't like it, hit the thumbs down, it really, I mean, it's all good feedback to me, uh, and subscribe, whether you liked it or not, subscribe. Hey guys, one more thing on the, uh, on the brakes, um, so that, that method typically always applies, um, I did want to mention in inclement weather conditions, uh, snow, rain, ice, what have you, again, use your judgment. I mean, you, you want to tailor how you're braking to current road conditions. So, I mean, everything that I've said in this video pertain to dry, ideal condition pavement. Um, but I mean, like if it's snowing or there's ice on the road, you're not going to jam on the brake and come, you know, try to slow down as fast as you can, you know, before you go around that curve or whatever, you know, you might want to start braking a little sooner, um, you know, brake in, in spurts. So, you know, you're coming up to that curve, you know, you're going to brake, let off, brake, let off, brake, let off. And then now you can go through. Um, but again, guys, just use your judgment. I don't want... The last thing I want to do is put out some advice and, you know, somebody be like, hey, you know, Mike said this and that's what I did and I lost control of my trailer and now I'm jackknifed or sideways or somebody died, you know. So, again, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt. I'm just giving you my experiences and what's works, but what's, what has worked best for me. Um, but, you know, just... Uh, Again, use, use your common sense, use your judgment. You know, if the weather conditions are not good or not ideal, you know, change the way that you drive. Drive slower, brake sooner. Um, you know, again, you know, you, you gotta be smart about this. So uh, I just wanted to make, make a mention of that. Um, so, cause I'm sure somebody's gonna mention in the comments, well, hey, what if it's icy, you know? You know or, or you didn't say this. So, uh, you know, I don't want anybody thinking that, you know, I'm going to put out bad advice, you know, uh, I'm not the end all be all. I'm not the world's authority on how to do this by any means. People out there have been doing this a lot longer than me, but, uh, you know, this, I, I just, I want to try to help. So, um, again, you guys be safe out on the road and I'll catch you next time.